do amazing. Flip! What the heck? 446! Why is this one so bad? That's, that's actually ridiculous. G'day guys, Cam Shan here, and today we're looking at the Oroco 2.5 inch USB-C drive enclosure. Now this is USB Gen 3.1, which means you can get up to 10 gigabits if you enclose the correct drive. Just like I've done in their older model here with this Intel solid state drive. So we're going to unbox it, check out what speeds it gets and compare it to a standard 2.5 inch spinning hard drive and something like this blazing fast Samsung T5 drive. So that's what you're going to see today. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's check what's inside the box. So starting off, you've got a USB 3 cable with USB-C. Now you can tell that they're USB 3 because it'll have blue on the tip inside the uh, USB itself. So you get one of them and you're also gonna get the enclosure itself along with some instructions. So the instructions, Okay, so instructions have some vital information here. Let you know that you can only fit only a two and a half inch drive, we know that, but 9.5 millimeters high. So that's the thickness of the drive inside, only nine and a half mil. So maybe measure whatever you're planning to put inside. Apart from that, everything else is straightforward. You put the drive inside and it's going to work. So opening up our packet, we've got a nice see-through clear enclosure. So you can see we've got the USB-C port here on the side. Now the USB-C port is uh, what's going to connect up, obviously up with our cable, and we'll then connect the drive up to our PC. So you might be like, Cam, what are the benefits of this? Why, why would I care about a USB-C enclosure? Well, I've been using this guy. This is a drive I used to have in a laptop that I put in. Um, now when your laptop carks it, you might be like, damn, I've lost all those photos, or I've lost all that information. I'm gonna have to take it to a computer guy to get fixed. No, you can just chuck them straight into an enclosure like this one. So this is their older one. This is a slower, just plain USB 3. And uh, today we're testing out the USB 3.1. So if we take the drive just like so, and we're just going to slot it inside like that. So it connects up over the SATA and the power to the solid state drive and you just slide over the enclosure, it clicks in place, and then you're good to go. So it's as easy as that to get this enclosure up and running. We've got a solid state drive, blazing fast, fast speeds, but how fast? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test out in the MacBook here. We're gonna test out a couple of drives. As I said, we've got a two and a half inch spinning hard drive. So that's the one with multiple CDs inside and it's just spinning, reading and writing. That's a mechanical drive. We've got the Samsung T5. These things are blazing fast. I use this with my Blackmagic cinema camera because it allows you to write a ton of data quick. Now this guy, well, we don't know how fast he is yet. It's rated for up to 10 gigabits a second, but obviously depends on what drive you've got inserted and the device you've got it connected to. So we'll find out how quick that comes out. And also wanna know how quick it is over the cheaper old USB 3 version. So we've gone from Gen 3.0, which has a five gigabit max, to 3.1, which is 10 gigabit. So for our first speed test, we're gonna run the internal hard drive on the Mac. So we've done 1.2 gigabytes a second on the right and 2.5 gigabytes on the read. That's just ridiculous. We're not even going to try and compare these external drives because we know that's just too fast. What we'll test next is we might do a spinning hard drive. So we'll set the uh, benchmark really low. Now we'll have to use a dongle to get this guy to work. So bear with me, I didn't grab that. So it took me so long to find the dongle that I had to go to work. <laughs> no joke. So uh, yeah, Apple, everyone loves having dongles. It makes their life so easy. It's just really just a part of your workflow. <laughs> to be honest, I left it in my suitcase after I went to Melbourne and uh, forgot about that. So it was packed away. So you know, Mitch, if you want to uh, see the footage from Melbourne trip, hit subscribe. I'm going to show you how I edited up some uh, clips on the train, on the go, on my phone. So if you're interested in that, hit subscribe. You better see See all that goodness. Anyway, let's do some testing. Okay. And of course, because I use Windows every day, this hard drive is from a Windows PC. It's NTFS file system mounted, therefore it's not gonna be compatible with the Mac. So I'm just gonna throw up a speed test here on the screen so we know how well it did on Crystal Disk, which is how we're going to speed test on Windows systems. Okay, so we'll do a test on what should be the fastest and speed test. 
Not bad on the right, I knew it would be at least about 500 megabytes a second, so that's pretty good. Yeah, read push over 500. Okay, so we wrote at 488 megabytes a second and we read at 513. So I knew it was gonna be pretty good because that's what I guess I bought this guy for. And you can see we get heaps of ticks on the screen. The Blackmagic tool tells you what formats you can film on a Blackmagic cinema camera onto that drive. So that's why that test is kind of good. It gives you an idea, um, but I'll give you some examples on the screen as to how quick it copies something at that rate. So we're just gonna switch the drive back into the slow enclosure because we're gonna set our expectations lower and then see if we get any improvement. Okay, so I'm gonna go USB cable in here, dongle. So you can see that I'm already recommending the USB-C drive hands down for future proofing because uh, or else you have to carry this around just to use the old housing. That's pretty, that's pretty bad. That right is really slow. 40 megabytes a second right. It should be at least probably near the 100. So that's um, not off to a good start. And our read is at the same. So that's pretty average. I wonder if it's the drive's just decided to cark itself over all the years or if it's the enclosure. Good thing we've got two enclosures to test in. We've got uh, 40.4 megabytes right and 40.3 megabytes read. Not great, nothing flash. Um, we'll just do a quick little eject because the light was flashing. If you're wondering why you eject on your PC, if the light's flashing, it means something's reading and writing to the drive. So that means you do want to actually do it. If you don't have a light in your device and you can't really guess, well, you're best off just clicking it anyway. It's good practice. You don't want to lose your data. Let's switch over to the USB-C enclosure. <laughs> Plug in the new solid state drive. We've tripled our right. That's not bad. Now this is an old solid state, so I wasn't expecting it to do amazing. Flip! What the heck? 446. Why is this one so bad? That's, that's actually ridiculous. Okay, well yeah, that's good. We've, um, we've achieved something here. I always thought this guy was a little bit not off. Could be a faulty unit, I don't know. But, end of the day, you should be picking this up. 444 megabytes a second. Now we haven't crossed the barrier into five gigabit, 10 gigabit territory. We're not hawking that because we're running just a standard solid state drive. But that's ridiculous. That's actually really fast. Okay. We'll quickly do some tests on crystal disk and just verify these results. Okay, so I've done the Windows tests and it was interesting. The old enclosure was a lot faster than it was on the Mac. So I'm just gonna redo it with a different dongle. I wonder if maybe just the dongle's a bit like screwy that we have. So we're gonna use a different dongle here, USB-C to old school USB, USB-A. Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> nah, it's just absolutely taxed on Mac. Whoa, we're only doing 40 megabytes right. That's ridiculous. Reads the same. Okay, this is bizarre. I don't know. Oh yeah, there's a random Rubik's cube on the desk. I was asking people in Insta story if they know how to solve it because I don't. But let me, hey, let me know in the comments below if you know how to solve a Rubik's cube, and if you have any recommendations of where to start. Different, completely off topic, but that's what I'm going to start working on. So we'll get rid of that. All right, these are results from the Windows test. Okay, so spinning hard drive, the slow boy, the guy that's physical and he's like churning away. We had a read of 90 megabytes a second and a write of 90 megabytes a second. So that's pretty pretty good. This SSD, so the standard old USB enclosure plugged into the Windows PC with Crystal Disk. Okay. There's our marks there. So we've got 289 megabytes a second read. A lot faster than the 40 we're getting on the Mac. Now I've used the Mac for these tests, tried to use it because it's got the 10 gigabit per second USB Gen 3.1 ports. So it's the latest model, it's got everything on it. It should be really quick. And my motherboard and my PC does not, but it's pulling out bigger numbers. So we've got 289 there and 136 on the right. The USB-C in the SSD enclosure. So the new one that we're testing, 
it rocked out 380 and the right was 137. So when we've moved it from the old into the new, we've got an extra 100 megabytes per second on the Windows PC with Crystal Disk. And if you use the T5, you're looking at 410 on the read and 401 on the write. So the whole point of using this T5 drive, which is why I use it with my cinema camera, all of that stuff is your write is ridiculously high and it's constant. It's more reliable, you're gonna achieve that. That's why people buy these ones. But if you're just gonna put like memes and stuff on your drive, like you just got games, family movies, anything like that, then pick up the USB-C one for sure. Definitely worth it. Um, 380 and 140, like those are good numbers for this specific solid state drive. That leads me to, you need to make sure that the drive that you put in it is gonna be fast. So check out the different speeds available in the market for solid state drives. Make sure you pick up one that is good. Okay, so prices, we're looking here on eBay, 20 bucks for the USB-C and the old generation one is going for about 11 bucks. I guess it's older, it's not as fast, they're clearing them out. So $9 difference for a world of difference in performance and support. So in the end, should you get one of these Orico enclosures? Yes, if you've got a couple of drives laying around, it's perfect. If you've got some old two and a half inch drives that you don't want to put in a new USB-C enclosure, that's also perfectly fine. Uh, it's going to be handy for that. It's very easy just to put the drive in and then just you know slide it over, you're good to go. If you haven't got any solid states laying around, well, you could probably look at getting something like the T5 if you've got the extra cash. They are a lot more expensive. This is the 500 gig model. It costs $150, I think there are. A lot more expensive to get up and running, but they're going to give you that reliability. You're buying a purpose-built thing. This is kind of like a little bit of a Frankenstein. Not really, but like you're making your own uh, storage. So you don't have the reliability. You don't have the warranty. You don't have any of that coming with it. But if you're a little bit into tech and you're happy to experiment, it's great. I use them, I've been using this old one, I'm not gonna be using it anymore. 40 megabytes, what is that? That's just a joke. But being able to get the new read right, we're gonna swap it over. Boom, out of the old and slide it in, click into the new. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Give the thumbs up if you like this. Also, links are in description for all of the uh, items that we've been checking out today. Okay, so thanks for watching. Make sure you click subscribe if you aren't already, and um, I'll see you in the next video. We're checking out that Melbourne footage. It's coming, it's coming in a couple of days. I'll see you then. <laughs> Bye.